we all have a vocation. See, when we think of vocation, we think of vocation to the priesthood, to become a monk, a nun, your know, brother or sister, your know, religious life. Or we might think of a vocation to marriage. But we all have vocation. God has placed each and every one of us here on earth for some special purpose. Being a ditch digger is as important a vocation as being pope. Because, see, we should be in the calling where God wants us. And this brings me to a section of the sacred scriptures. <clears throat> to a vocation that was given. Uh, Matthew 19, 16 and the following verses. It'd be good to look this one up. Matthew 19, 16, etc. And behold, one came and said to him, Good master, what good shall I do that I may have life everlasting? Okay, he's asking a question. It's a question each and every one of us should ask God. Who said to him, that being Jesus, he said to him, Why askest thou me concerning good? One is good, God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. That's vocation for all of us. But Jesus is going to go further in a little bit. He said to him, Which? And Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith to him, All these I have kept from my youth. What is yet wanting to me? Okay. He's asking for more. Jesus saith to him, if thou wilt be perfect, go sell what thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. Okay? Now Jesus is giving him a special vocation. This is, this is one I did not really understand, and we're going to read over here in another book in a minute. And when the young man had heard this word, he went away sad, for he had great possessions. Okay? At this point, Jesus is calling this man to perfection, <clears throat> to a special vocation, just like he'd called Peter, James, John, all the apostles. And if we look at scriptures, each one of them immediately, when they were called, followed. The ones that are recounted for us. They're not all recounted that I found. It may all be there, I just didn't find them. And so, here is a special vocation given to this man. And he went away sad. And this is what we need to keep in mind if God calls us to a special vocation. I'm reading from Solid Virtue. Excellent book. I'm not quite finished. You can see I have another bookmark yet in here. Excellent book. I'm enjoying it. It's teaching me a lot, and including what I'm discussing today. A third example, also taken from the Gospel, gives new strength to our opinion. Uh, the opinion being that if we are called to a special vocation and we refuse, we're toast. And I'll go in more detail in a minute. Our Lord wished to call a young man to high sanctity, that's the scripture, and he deigned to do so in these terms. If that will be perfect, Go sell what thou hast, and give it to the poor, and come follow me. And when the young man had heard this word, he went away sad, for he had great possessions. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, I say to you, that a rich man shall hardly enter the kingdom of heaven. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. And this book continues. O oh, fearful words, by which the eternal wisdom teaches us that this young man, although he had preserved his innocence and spawned until then, okay, up to this point he's doing great, had just exposed his salvation to imminent peril by refusing to tend to the perfection to which God called him. Jesus is God. He can call us to that. And he calls some of us to that. This it was that was signified by the mournful glance which the Savior then cast upon him and by the sigh with which he uttered the sad words. How difficult it is for such men to enter into the kingdom of heaven. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. Alas, these words forcibly express how perilous is the position of the soul of that poor young man. 
And according to several authors, there is reason to believe that he really incurred damnation. In reading the works of various people on vocation, including St. Alphonsus Liguori and Willie Doyle, uh, if God sends us a vocation like to the priesthood, and we do not follow it, our salvation is at best difficult. I recall the story of a man coming to the Curie of Ars thinking he had a vocation of the priesthood, and the Curie of Ars told him to go get married. Now, the Curie of Ars could read souls. Now, not all are called to the priesthood, but some are. This young man here attained an ardent desire of salvation. What good shall I do? Said he, that I may have life everlasting. What is yet wanting to me? He kept all the commandments from his youth. He had never committed mortal sin. He had preserved his innocence intact. <coughs> oh, bless me. <laughs> Jesus Christ, looking at him, had loved him for his purity of heart. And it is considered with much probability that he afterwards fell into mortal sin and perished eternally for having resisted his vocation to great sanctity. The reason is that for him also there was no medium between sublime holiness and perdition. And this book gives other examples. It tells us, St. Teresa, if she had not followed her vocation to great sanctity, she was shown the place in hell that had her name on it. And the question we have to ask ourselves, is there a place in hell with my name on it? And if so, what am I doing to try and avoid it? Moreover, we should be asking, what is the place that has my name on in heaven? Am I called to a special vocation? Some who will see this video, I believe, are. You're called to a special vocation. And I'm going to be sending something out in print to my mailing list on this subject. Because I'm praying for you. That God will give you the strength and the heart to follow that vocation. This is the worst time in church history. We've been reduced to not quite nothing. God is calling some of you. I don't know who. He hasn't told me. I can guess possibly in a couple of cases. I'm not sure or them even. But I am praying for you. God is calling you. And indeed, God is calling all of you into his holy church. That is a minimum. But God is calling some to a great vocation. So I'd like to ask everyone watching this to pray for these people that God is calling. And then be brave enough to ask God, is it I, Lord? In other words, are you calling me? And if so, give me the strength and the grace, because this is not an easy time. I'm not going to uh, kid you about that, but think of the apostles. With the exception of one, they were martyred. They were called to the martyrdom. Some of us may be called to martyrdom, but I know some are called to the priesthood to come and join with us in preparing to be one of Christ's priests. And so, on that, I leave it to you to ask God. And I am praying that God will send you the grace to follow the vocation, if it is you. May God bless all of you, and especially those to whom he is calling to his holy priesthood in the Catholic Church.